All right, so here we have a question that's looking at the rate of a rhythm, okay? Specifically, it says, what is the atrial rate of this following rhythm here that we have here in V1? And it gives a number of different rates. Is it uh, less than 40 beats per minute? Is it between 40 and 60 beats per minute? Is it between 60 and 100 beats per minute or over 100 beats per minute? Okay, now one thing you have to note is that we're looking at the atrial rate, okay? So atrial rate, I want you to think of P waves. That's what we use to identify. When we look at ventricular rate, you can use the QRS complexes, which are commonly used, or the T wave. Remember, the T wave represents ventricular repolarization. All right. So again, here, when we look at rate, there's a few things we have to do. First, we have to note the regularity of the rhythm. Okay. So is it irregular or regular? That's our first question. Now we do that. In this case, we can look at these S waves. So the S wave is this one here, and we look at the interval to the next one. Okay. And we see, is this S to S interval, okay, the same as the one that follows, all right? And you would see that they're the same throughout. Now, when we look at the P waves, we're looking also at the P to P interval we can use. So here's a P wave, and in fact, this is one that follows, okay? And you have another P wave here and a P wave. So we can look at the intervals between the P waves. And you would see that these P to P intervals are also consistent, okay? So from one P wave, to the next, to the one that follows, okay? If you were to measure these all out, you would see that this is certainly a regular interval. You can use your calipers or a piece of paper to measure those out. So we know this is a regular rhythm, whether you're looking at the ventricles or the atrium, okay? So we have a regular rhythm. And notice that we were having a lot more P waves. Remember, we said this is a P wave, this is a P wave, this is a P wave, and this is a P wave. So for those four P waves, we only have two QRS complexes, okay? So there's twice as many P waves. So in order to find the atrial rate in this regular rhythm, we have to count the P waves going across, which we can do here. So we have four already. Here's five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and there's one at the end, 25. So we have a total of 25 P waves, okay? So what do we do with those 25 P waves? Well, remember, this is a standard ECG, which I took it from, of lead V1, from beginning all the way to end, represents 10 seconds in duration, okay? Meaning if you multiply 10 by six, you get 60 seconds, which is also one minute. That means if you count these complexes, these P waves going across and multiply it by six, you can get an estimate of the rate in beats per minute. So we said we had 25 P waves, we're multiplying it by six, okay? So 25 times six is 150 beats per minute, okay? And this is our atrial rate. So the atrial rate is 150 beats per minute. So based on our answers, we can see that it's clearly D's our correct answer over 100 beats per minute. So that's a uh, tachycardia, right? A fast heart rate. Normally, if the sinus, the intrinsic rate of the sinus nodes between 60 and 100 uh, in adults, and this is what we're assuming an adult patient. Okay, so that's one way. The other way is because we have a regular rhythm, right? We saw that in the beginning, we can find where a P wave that falls on one of those thick lines, okay? So if you look here, here's a P wave here, and notice that it falls simply on that. And we find the next P wave, which is here, okay? And notice that there's two thick lines between it, okay? So there's this one, and this is the second, all right? So what you would do in that case is 300 divided by two, and again, gives you 150 beats per minute. Now, the second way that we found it, so this was the first way here, the second way we can only do with regular rhythms, okay? So if you wanna learn one, make sure you just learn this first way where you're counting the complexes and multiplying it by six, okay? Because you can use that for both regular and irregular. So regular or irregular rhythms you can use this for, okay? Now, if we were to find the ventricular rate, you would do the same thing. You can count the complexes, right? And because it's about half, we said two to one, maybe it's around 75 beats per minute, okay? So specifically, you have to note that we're looking at the atrial rate that it's asking for, and our rate here is over 100 uh, beats per minute, so D is certainly the correct answer. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something.
Please don't forget to like this video and leave a comment below if you like what we're doing. In fact, many of you have asked how you could help us out. Really, the best way you could do is simply subscribe and share this resource with your friends. And you get free access to more than 300 videos. There is also a community of over 270,000 of us like-minded individuals on Facebook. So stop over and join the EKG Guys uh, Facebook community. Many of you have also asked some questions. Leave them below or share them on Facebook and we can try to answer them with a short video so everyone else can learn. We also have a number of new courses with corresponding videos coming out soon, so stay tuned for those. Last but certainly not least, your feedback is incredibly helpful and your kind words are always an encouragement on those long days. So let us know how we're doing. Thank you again for your support. It is truly appreciated. We are the largest, fastest growing EKG resource in the world.